Hey, this is Russ. I'm back out on the road. Yeah, it's uh, a little cooler right now than it had been for the last two days, but I think it's gonna get up there again. Let's go this way. <clears throat> so what time is it right now? It is 8.46. I'm out on the magic cycle again. Putting in my mileage. Getting used to the bike. Giving you better reports on the second report. So I finished up my uh, my ride to find out what the range is on this battery. And uh, I was going to release that second half of that ride today, but decided not to. We were just kind of going around in circles. <laughs> And I felt, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of boring. Let's let's do a different video. So now you might be wondering, what's the end result? What is the what is the mileage? Well, I guess you're gonna have to wait and watch the second part of the review. <laughs> See how that worked out? Didn't even tell you the answer to that. Yeah, you're gonna have to wait. I will say this, it's surprisingly better than I thought it would be. How's that? <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's at least encouraging, right? Anyways, I found that after doing the pedaling and throttling so much on that day, because I, I literally exhausted that battery down to, I think, 12%. I didn't want to go any further. I mean, I, I, I probably could could have squeezed out another mile or two out of there at least if I wanted to but then your battery would be down to like zero percentage I don't I don't think I wanted to do that it's not good for your battery so so let's just say when you see the final report of it add a mile or two you know if you if you absolutely had to eke out some additional um, range out of it yeah, you still got it there but in general you don't want to ride your your bike to total exhaustion of the battery that's not really good for the battery you want to get it charged up you know right after you do that too you don't want to hang around with literally an almost exhausted battery and not charge it so so i was out earlier this morning with my wife she's off of work today and she um said well let's go grocery shopping so she took her rad mini step through two and I took the Magicycle. And usually when I'm out and about, especially when we go shopping, <laughs> that lady's not paying any attention. Um, there's usually somebody who will stop me and, and talk to me about the bike, and sure enough, a gentleman stopped me and talked to me. So if you're that person that stopped me at the grocery store and talked a little bit, say hi. <laughs> Put a comment. Thank you. Yeah, apparently he has a he has an e-bike, but he said it was um, it was out in Florida. So gave him the Russ's Right business card so he can check the channel out. Now, I, I, uh, I came back home and I looked at some of the comments and somebody had mentioned too that they, they do a YouTube channel and they're struggling to get subscribers. Look in the comments. Um, let's see, that would be, what would that be? That would, that would have come out on Friday. Look at the Friday, Friday comments and give him a little bit of likes and subscribe to his channel. Sorry, I can't remember what his name is, but if you look through the comments, I'm sure you'll find him. <laughs> heavy traffic. And when there's heavy traffic, you got to use the bell. Uh, we'll use the bell anyways. So anyways, uh, 
let's get back to the uh, the ride and testing out the battery. When I, did, I was doing that, I was using throttling along with pedaling, but I took the throttle and matched the wattage output to what it would have been had I, had I pedaled. So technically, I guess it's throttling and pedaling, but not heavy throttling, just light throttling. And I guess because I've been doing it so much, you know, I have this uh, thumb throttle hook, hooked up to it, and I only have that taped on there. Uh, I think I was melting the tape or something. <laughs> Maybe the sticky parts of the tape, I was kind of melting it down a little bit. And so, um, and so it's it's starting to slip a little bit now. I was thinking I was going to retape this because it's kind of sliding a little bit now. But I do have two thumb throttles being printed up for me at the local library, and uh, I think I'm just going to wait because those are thinner. And it might actually grip better, in which case uh, I will switch over to that one. Um, so I really don't want to retape this one because it may be going away. <laughs> and these, these again, this is the one that I got from the library. Uh, they um, they um, 3D printed it for me. They only charge you for the plastic that they use. They don't charge you for the labor. I did ask the lady once how much uh, time it takes to, to do. And she says something like that, probably about two hours. That's a long time. That's a long time. So they're putting in two hours of uh, machine time on there and they don't charge you for anything except for the plastic. It's kind of a service to the community. So uh, they told me that it could take up to a week to get. Now I asked for two of these things. I don't know if they'll do two of them for me or not, but, um, and, and I don't know how good it is, but you know, it, it's, it's smaller than this one, so even so, this one only costs 50 cents. So I don't know how, uh, how well the other uh, one will eat up in terms of um, plastic. It might be less than 50 cents. <laughs> Who knows, we'll see. But they're, they're so cheap that how, how could you say no? <laughs> you gotta do it, right? So. Anyways, if you didn't see the uh, video I made on, on the 3D printing of this, I'll, I'll put a link. You, you know when I say put a link, it's usually it shows up if you're, if you're on a computer, but um, I guess I got to get used to putting it into the description of the videos too, so that way if you're not there, you can always click on that and then you can get to the, uh, to the video. But you could always search for stuff too. If for some, some reason I mentioned something and I mentioned that I made a video on, on something and I didn't put a link. If you're on the Russ is Right channel, you could search within the channel, just type in like 3D or something, or 3D printing, it'll show up. So it's not hard to find stuff. It's, it's all based on whether I typed in some words somewhere along the line, probably in the title somewhere, and then uh, you, can, you can find it. But you got, I think you gotta be within the Russ is Right channel to do that though. So today, I'm just riding around you know, it's, um, I'm not going anywhere specific. And just kind of riding around the various neighborhoods. So the first path we just took is the opposite direction of the path that we took to go to um, the area that we usually, usually ride. And the nice thing too is a lot of the bike riders around here will wave to you. Not all, but a lot of them do. I usually wave back. I, I wave back to the other gentleman. He waved to me there <laughs> as we passed him. He was going the opposite direction. Yeah, some will wave to you, some will not. It really depends. I don't know if this person in front of us is going to pass or not, but I am going to go to the left. All right, so let's do it. Now you'll, you'll remember this one. This is the one that we take when we do our test on the hill. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me take you to another area. Let me take you to another area after we go through that hill. Um, section and go to the uh, 
into the forest preserves. Let's, let's take a ride out over there. You know, I, I have a hard time sometimes figuring out where we're going to go. And, uh, you know, I don't want to go do the same things over and over. Sorry if you hear that. I'm, you know, I get hit by bugs like crazy all the time. And sometimes they get caught up in the visor. So I, I have to swat them off of me. Otherwise, you know, they're, they're stuck between the visor and, and, and you. That's not good. <laughs> so uh, sorry if you hear, sometimes you hear some handling noise on the microphone. Yeah, I asked my wife if she wanted to ride some more, but that was it. I think she's uh, she is not uh, the same enthusiast as I am when it comes to the bikes and the bikes. She put in her ride to get to the grocery stores. We went to two grocery stores and then we came back. She says she's done. And that's just the beginning. I you got to get out more. But she says she was done. And like I said, she refuses to be on camera, so I cannot record those rides because she's usually in front of me. So I told her I'm going back out again. <laughs> so she says, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so you guys, you guys know this, and this empties out into the, into the sidewalk. So we are legally able to ride this sidewalk. All right. We'll hit our little stop there. And again, these are going to be rolling stops. I, I'm not going to do a full stop, as you know. That, that's believe me, that's more than I did last year. <laughs> last year, you know, I would totally blast through all of them because of my potential. I got to duck a little bit there. Get hit by a tree branch won't be good. Um, the potential to fall because of the weakened leg and weakened knee. But I was using the bike to strengthen my leg and, and knee. So I had to be out on the bike to do some pedaling, but I took the risk as well to do it. And the risk is the potential falling. Now, I know one of you guys had mentioned that it's uh, really muddy over here in front it, when it rains right here. Um, yeah, I know it. <laughs> uh, I've gone through it. That thing could be very slippery. So if you ever take this path down here, you, you want to be careful of that. So thank you for pointing that out, trying to keep me safe. I keep you guys safe, you keep me safe, it's good. Yeah, we do have some nice bike paths that we ride through. Uh, I'm very lucky. These are local paths, not too far. So it's easy for me to hit this the most. And um, sometimes we go further. Uh, today I won't be going further. We're just going to hang around this general area. So even though you see the same things, we do see new things sometimes that ha happen. Now, earlier rides, things were not as green. If you take a look now, after a couple weeks now, things have greened out quite a bit. Even the trees are starting to get their leaves back now. So, you know, whereas before we had all this area here was just like twigs. <laughs> now it's got leaves. Doesn't take much. And we've had some good weather. Well, okay, 90 degree weather. I don't know if that's considered good weather, but compared to winter weather, yeah, that's good weather. <laughs> and uh, so that's helped out quite a bit. But, uh, this gentleman we just passed, I see him all the time. And uh, he's always walking and I'm always riding. So we, we do run into the same people all the time. That's his exercise. Now I'm gonna let this guy come through first because um, that's a very narrow um, bridge sometimes. So because we know it, it's best to uh, not do two, two people through this bridge. This is the narrowest bridge we have. So it's just courtesies, right? Courtesies to other bike riders, to people that are around. I do my best. I, I can't guarantee I'm, I'm perfect at it all, but I do my best. Okay, so what have I noticed so far since we've been testing the Magic Cycle before the second review? Um, 
These are mechanical brakes, right? Mechanical disc brakes. And mechanical disc brakes require you to do some maintenance all the time on them. And I've noticed that the brakes have loosened up a little bit. Meaning, as I pull the, the brake lever, it's coming in closer to the, to the uh, hand grips. I don't like that. <laughs> I want it further. So there's adjustments that need to be done, okay? And one of the things that you can do, oh, this thing's <laughs> flipped up, I didn't even notice that, with all the bouncing around and stuff. One of the things that you can do is you can, um, you can make an adjustment right here in front. If, if you look where your, your cables are connected to the uh, brake lever itself, that can be unscrewed a little bit. And then there's a tightening, tightening uh, locking collar there. So you can, you can unscrew that a little bit and then relock it up with a tightening collar. Sometimes that's enough to uh, give a little bit more tension onto the cable and then your brakes will feel better for you. All right, that's one way. Another way to do it is you could go down by the brake calipers and there's actually a uh, circular hex, I, I don't know if you call it a nut or something, but it's a circular section that you can go to that, uh, that you can put a hex driver in there and turn that and that'll move the caliber slightly closer because really what happens is that the, uh, the brake pads will start wearing after you're using them. And of course, I'm using them a lot more now since I'm stopping more. Um, you, you can turn that and that'll bring the caliper slightly closer and that'll, that'll make the, the brake feel t like a, a little more tension so that when you squeeze on the levers, um, it's not like bottoming out and hitting the, uh, the hand grips. That's another way, okay? The third way you can fix it is you can actually readjust. You can actually readjust the uh, the cable itself. Now that would require you to loosen the cable. It's, it's usually held by a screw. Loosen the cable, squeeze the caliper a little bit, and pull down on the cable, and then retighten that screw. Okay. So uh, yeah, we, I see these people too all the time. <laughs> they do their little walk with their walking sticks. So uh, those are the three things you can do for a mechanical disc brake. Now, a hydraulic brake, you have a little bit less of these type of adjustments to do. And, and these mechanical disc brakes too, by the way, you have two brake pads in there. One brake pad is stationary and one brake pad moves. So what happens is the one that moves gets, it pushes inwards towards the non-moving brake pad. So it's kind of like really not uh, exactly in the middle of that. On your left. I don't think she really cared that was on her left. <laughs> so anyways, um, it, it's, it's actually not as, uh, not as evenly pulled. Um, compared to a hydraulic brake. These guys off over here, can you guys see? I'm gonna angle you to the right. They're ripping apart the, uh, the tennis courts that were there. I don't know why. Are they rebuilding the tennis courts? The tennis courts look perfectly fine. Why are they ripping it apart? Are they no longer offering tennis options here? <laughs> It is what it is, I guess. It's, it's all gonna be gone soon. They're ripping it up totally apart. All right, so we are approaching the area where we have problems going over the hill. Now we've tested before with the Magic Cycle. It goes over with no problem. Let's really test it this time. I'm gonna give it a level five and I'm gonna pedal hard. And let's see where it really goes. Last time I did this, I didn't pedal hard at all. I did it really softly. So let's pedal hard. So I'm really pedaling up, I'm gaining my speed, I'm doing 21, 20 to 21 miles an hour. Oops, we got people here. All right, we can't do it. We got people. Uh, I cannot test it. 
When you got people, you can't do it. <laughs> oh well, next time we've got we got plenty of times to do it. I wanted to see if, if if I could maintain the 20 to 21 miles an hour going over the top of the hill. I'm pretty sure I could if I pedaled hard. When I did the original review, I was barely pedaling. I was just pedaling just to get the uh, the sensor to to know that I was pedaling and it would give assist. And then. I think it dropped it down to 16 miles an hour or something like that from 20. But I think if I pedaled hard, I could maintain that 20 going through the entire thing. Yeah, we'll have to do it another day. Now, it wasn't safe to continue when you see people there. Yeah, bugs are still flying into me. Bugs are always flying into me. You know, the thing is, <laughs> one of these days I'm gonna eat a bug. When, when I was teaching photography in the past, I would take my students on field trips and one of the field trips that we used to do is we would go near the Adler Planetarium this is downtown Chicago and then I would have like maybe 30 of my students would be out there with tripods and everything they're gonna do night photography that's where you take the iconic uh, uh, skyline shot of Chicago right in front of the planetarium right over the water okay but you gotta wait until nighttime so that you have a really nice night look looking shot of the skyline well there's a lot of bugs <laughs> out there by the lake and uh, I think I ate like three bugs because you're talking and you know to your students you're constantly talking and they just fly right into your mouth and you kind of swallow them now these field trips that I did as you know I had a knee replacement issue um, and this was before I actually had the knee replacement so this is when I was still hurting before the knee replacement I would, uh, I would use a mobility scooter. I had a portable mobility scooter that fits in the trunk of my car, comes apart, fits in the trunk of the car. So I would use... <laughs> that little doggy's cute. But yeah, I gotta be careful. I would use um, a mobility scooter, scoot back and forth while I'm teaching. Because you know, with 30 photographers out there, they're all spread out. There's quite a bit of uh, people out there. So walking back and forth would have been tough to do for several hours. So as I'm scooting and talking, the bugs are flying into my mouth. <laughs> Swallowed at least three of those things. I don't want to do that again here, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure one day it's going to happen again. It'll fly right into your mouth as you're talking. I need to tighten this up. These, these things are held on by like a little strap and uh, the bouncing just bounces it up too much all the time. I bought some uh, boxing glove tape and I wrapped it around my one for the Rad Rover but I don't have anything on this one. Alright, let's see. Alright, it's turning here so I've got to go this, this direction. So we wait our turn. We want to make sure everything is uh, safe before we cross. <laughs> so I, I make sure that uh, not only that direction goes, but this direction goes, and then I cross. And then I hit the uh, cross walk thing. So this way I get a uh, pedestrian cross signal. Then I know it's safe for me to, to cross again on this way. Yeah, we've done this uh, several times, but again, it's the new information we talk about that makes the difference. You know, it doesn't really matter that much where we're riding. It's just as long as we're out riding, right? And sometimes you'll see some new things too when I uh, when I ride these things. I'll point them out when they happen. I think these uh, intersection things are always the toughest thing because nothing's happening. <laughs> We're just kind of hanging around waiting for our turn to cross, and we've got two of them to cross across. I've seen guys do a diagonal ride straight through the street, which is actually not safe or legal to do. They should really do it the way I'm. Do I just did it. That is the safest way to do it. All right, back into the forest preserves. 
So because I've been riding quite a bit already, I'm down to 44% on my battery. On your left. And uh, so I knew I couldn't go too far. At least not with, not with the magic cycle because I'd already ridden in the morning before, before this recording. That's why I decided, okay, we'll just, we'll just do this again. I could have taken the Rad Rover, but uh, I didn't feel like charging three batteries. I had my wife's battery to charge. I got this one to charge. I didn't want to charge the third one as well. So I says, I'll just continue on with the Magic Cycle. Magic Cycle will probably be my bike around this general area anyways, uh, because of the limited battery range of just one battery. I, when I go distance, I usually take two batteries, and that's, those are those um, triangle batteries that I have, the 20 amp hour each. So those will give me 40 amp hours of range, and that's, uh, I, I, can, I can do like 90 miles between the two batteries if I, if I pedaled most of it. All right, so we're gonna go up this uh, incline a little bit here. So I'm gonna pedal a little bit harder. We're doing 19.5. 20, I'm pedaling and throttling at the same time. I'm on uh, pedal assist level three and I was on uh, seventh gear. Now the one thing I have noticed too, if I'm going really fast, um, even on seventh gear, you're gonna do what they call ghost pedaling. <laughs> what that is is you're going so quick that no matter how fast you pedal, you can't catch up to how fast it's moving. So it's, it's almost like you're pedaling for no reason. I mean, you can't even feel it in your pedals. That's, that's called ghost, ghost pedaling, all right? So what happens there is a lot of people will, will take their, uh, their, their chain ring, which is you know, what's attaching your pedals, and they'll swap that out. Okay, we're gonna go up another hill. So I'm full throttling, I'm pedaling, Pedal assist level three. So on level three, we're getting 17.2 miles per hour. So, uh, so this whole thing with the ghost pedaling thing, um, what I would like to see is the manufacturers either putting a, uh, a second chain ring in there so that the, so you have you know like like a 10 speed bike. Remember the old 10 speed bikes? You had a you had a front derailleur and a rear derailleur. Remember that? These only have the ones in the rear. I'm gonna take you in this direction here. Um, I'd like to see them bring that back, quite frankly. Somehow, uh, so that there's another shifter. Those, the, the other thumb shifters probably would be able to do it better than, than this, this type here. And if they did that, we wouldn't be doing the ghost pedaling because then we would have the ability to uh, have another uh, set of teeth there they'll allow us to actually ride those fast speeds um, and still have some feel in our pedaling. The ghost pedaling is kind of interesting though because no matter what you do, that bike is moving. I mean, you just move, you just, you could slowly move your, your pedal and you're still moving because the, the sensor will, will notice that you're actually pedaling and it'll give the, the assistance whether you're pedaling hard or not, it's gonna give you that huge assistance. So, so one of the reasons why you'll see when I, when I do the, uh, the, ch the changes to the, to the menu of the, of the display, I don't put 100% for pedal assist level five. I'm usually down maybe to 90% or something like that. Because if I did 100, I would be totally ghost pedaling. It would be going so quickly that I uh, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even feel it as I'm pedaling, <laughs> so I I don't want to do that, so I, I lower it below the 100% level. Now you may think well then you're not getting the full benefit of what the bike is capable of. Well that's true, but <laughs> how fast do I need to go? <laughs> All right, we're gonna go up this hill. I'm just gonna throttle it. So we're doing 20. 19, 18, 18.5, 18.1. So we're doing about 18 miles an hour, give or take, over the top of that hill. And I know that when I had the other bike, 
uh, getting over the top of this hill was kind of tough as well. I'm kind of glad we do have some of these uh, hills to go over. It's good for testing. <laughs> then we know for sure how good the bikes are or not, you know. I mean, in general, the Midwest, we're fairly flat lands, but we do have our, our little inclines going up. So yeah, you do need a bike that has the ability to climb. So this one definitely does. The Rad can do it, but the Rad suffers through a little bit more. I still like the Rad though. I like them both. They, they both have their good points and not so good points. Although the, the not so good points of the Magic Cycle is adjustable. The not so good points on the Rad is not adjustable because if you can't get up the hill, you can't get up the hill. <laughs> I mean, you're kind of stuck at that point. You, you get whatever you get. We're going, on, going in a circle here and then head back. This is essentially the end of the path for the cars when they park out here and have picnics and whatever they do out here. So they give a circular thing, bring you back down again. Yeah, see, we did get, we did get to go to see some new things. Although part of it was uh, things you've seen before, this part is new stuff to you. So today is Friday that I'm recording this. You'll, you'll get to see this recording on Monday. Now this past week, I've tried my best to do a video every single day, and um, I was able to do it. But I will tell you, it's quite a bit of work to do that. So here's what I decided I will do. I may take a day or two off within the week, but not know which day or two I'm going to do that. So. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to look at YouTube and see if Russ is Right has got a, a video up. More than likely there will be one, but there's probably going to be a day that, hey, Russ doesn't have a video. That's my day of rest. <laughs> it's my day of rest or I'm, I'm working on some other things um, that requires my attention and I can't make a video for that day. In addition to that too, uh, some suggestions came in to me. I, I was asking, you know, we're in the Midwest. I obviously can ride when the weather is good, but what about the days when the weather is not so good? You know, if it's raining, I might not have a riding video because I can't get out there to ride. What about the winter when it snows? I don't, I don't ride in the snow. How, how do we fill up our time that way? So the suggestion came in, and I thought about this before as well, is to pre-record some some video and hold on to those videos and let them be released during the winter months. What do you guys think about that? Put a comment below. Let me know. If you're okay with that, I would like to do that. So like for instance, um, you know, these rides last a lot longer than the 45 minutes or whatever I make my videos for you guys. Um, I could uh, record all of those rides the entire thing and just hold back on those videos and don't release them. I'd, ha I'd end up with a stockpile of videos which can be released during the winter months. What do you think about that? Now my only thing that I kept thinking about that was not 100% perfect because of that is the fact that um, you know we might be talking about things that might be only really relatable for that part of the season <laughs> and it wouldn't make any sense when you listen to it during the winter but you know people watch videos that are older all the time you know you see somebody else's video that's six months old so really I guess it doesn't matter that much but I've always tried to be um, consistent and up-to-date with anything I release so obviously that would not happen if I hold back on some videos uh, as a stockpile for the winter months on the other hand, I could take those videos and edit in commentary stuff, uh, maybe before the video runs, something like that, that's more um, up to date, and then after that, run the videos of, of the stockpiled uh, rides. So, so these are just some things I'm thinking about. 
put a comment below if you'd like. Let me know what you think about that concept. Stockpiling some, some videos and holding it for the winter. <laughs> let, let me show you this. Can you guys see this? I'm going to angle here. Traffic is really fast down this road in, in both directions. And so I've always felt that they really need to put a... Not, not a stoplight, but just like at that one area where I can push the button and it, it blinks the light to tell the cars that they need to let some bike riders or pedestrians cross because there's no way of crossing this this intersection and they're all going 40 miles an hour or faster so I've always felt that this is an area that's just an accident waiting to happen they really need to improve that All right, you guys are familiar with this area here. We'll just ride a little bit of it, and then we'll call it a day. My battery's currently down to 31%. I have enough to go around this if I want, but I'm not gonna hold you the entire time. But I just wanted to let you see, you know, even for the short time that we've been together, for especially for some of the new, new subscribers that have subscribed here, uh, things are greened out now. Look at the trees leaves are already starting to come up all the grasses are starting to come up they're starting to turn green this is where I really like being out here uh, versus um, you know early in the season when all the trees just look like twigs <laughs> there was no grass there was no leaves it wasn't as nice Alright, we are facing into the sun, and I know that that doesn't usually look too good on camera. So, instead of going straight, I'm going to take a right turn when we get to that intersection. <laughs> Which is the same direction that we've done in the past. Yeah, the other video that I, I released um, might have looked a little dark because we were testing the battery out and um, it was like 6.45 in the morning. Well, that's just the angle of the sun and everything that causes a whole totally different look. Well, apparently I'm not the only one with a safety vest on. He had a safety vest on. You know, you can buy these safety vests on Amazon, that's where I got mine, but you could also go to Menards. I noticed that uh, if you have a Menards in your area, it's a hardware store, they sell the safety vests. They even had like uh, long sleeve yellow shirts and the like, high visibility shirts. And I had thought about you know, should I be wearing that instead? Cover up my arms. My arms are going to get dark. It's already getting dark now. If you take a look at my arms, you know, I've kind of browned out already. Um, I've always been a little darker, but I'm going to get really dark. I'm telling you. My, my face gets really dark. My arms get really... My, my hands have already darkened up. Okay, now you may say something about that stop, but I showed it before. That goes to nowhere. Both sides are gated. No cars ever go through that area. I think that stop sign is good if, if they have some type of construction stuff that they're working on, then the vehicles might come through. But for years that I've been going through here, nobody's ever come through. It, it's, they rarely ever use those access streets. That's why I just kind of keep going through that area. Thank you. Alrighty. Yeah, things are looking better. There's still some flooding area over here. That's from all the water and the rain we've had for the last couple of weeks. That'll eventually dry up. 
This stop sign here is for parked cars, for the forest preserve. A lot of times most of us really zip by this thing as well because usually there's not that many cars that go by, but believe me, the stop I just did is what most people will do if they stop at all. Alrighty, I think we've done enough. <laughs> If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let me know again what you think about stockpiling some footage for, uh, for future rides that might happen in the winter months. If I start the stockpiling now, I probably might end up with enough that will last me through the winter. It's like a, <laughs> it's like a squirrel gathering nuts and storing it away. I'll talk to you guys next time.